am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. events today, just whatever comes to my head. And uh, whatever the title of this video will be is something I've determined after the video because I didn't go with, it, with any ideas. So it's going to probably be political, I'm going to guess, because that's kind of where my head's leaning. But whatever it is, I hope you like the video. And if you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't uh, subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So what's going on in our political mess of a world here in the United States? It seems like all over the world, this authoritarianism, this um, nationalism is uh, taking hold. And uh, lots of, uh, it, it hasn't worked out very well for Britain. Remember, they said, oh, Brexit? We don't want that. I mean, we don't want to be part of the European Union. We just depend on ourselves. And what a mess that has turned out to be, nationalism. Um, all the other countries, I mean, uh, there's stories about folks who have actually left normal folks, not like rich people or, or people who have money to travel, but normal folks who have left a country. One fat guy took his company, his family to Belarus, okay? Belarus is the puppet of Russia. The president of Belarus is in uh, Putin's uh, pocket. And uh, they get over there and they found out, oh, we thought we'd have all the same freedoms and the quality of life and infrastructure that we had in the United States. And uh, all that would come with us when we went to a different country and we would just have a, a, a better way to live magically. No, you've got whatever those people, whatever tyranny those people are living under, that's now what you have to understand at 35 years old or 40 years old or even 20 years old, whatever it is you decide to change. So. Let's uh, think about nationalism. Is nationalism going to uh, win over the majority of the people, uh, voters in the United States? Let's do three cards. One, two, three. Is nationalism going to be the majority of the people? Is that what they're going to vote for here in the United States? Well, it starts out with this uh, nine of pentacles. This is a very privileged person. Uh, they're rich in, in value or money. And uh, so this is what nationalism maybe looks like to them. The challenge of it is the Queen of Cups. It's a very compassionate issue. It's uh, right up there next to the King. And then the next card up is the Knight of Cups. So it's all a very uh, compassionate, heartfelt situation that someone's willing to fight for, though they're not getting anywhere in their fight. So nationalism, they feel like that's where the value is. It's a heartfelt situation for them, almost as important as a king, but it's a queen. And um, there's a fight involved that they feel is a heartfelt, important fight. Uh, two more cards for nationalism. Is it going to take over? The Ace of Cups. Again, it's got a big pull. Uh, the Page of Swords. So this is the page. He's the very least important member of the royal court, but he's better than everybody else in the village, okay? He's, uh, the Swords is truth, justice, rules, and law. So there's this little cutting edge of a Page of Swords to accompany this nationalism. One more card. And the final card is now nationalism uh, will eventually die because at the will of truth, justice, rules, and law. So it carries an awful lot of importance right now in the world. People think I am the most important. And it's a heartfelt, almost a kingly, but it's a queenly amount of uh, activity that, that uh, or motion that brings them to that decision. They're willing to fight for it. It's the most important thing in their life, but they don't realize they're not the most important thing in their government's life, and it will eventually die. So nationalism has got a ways to go, but uh, it won't uh, rule the roost in the long run. Um, what about all these, without naming them, all these members of Congress who really just throw themselves behind, I mean, they welcomed him, uh, 34 times convicted felon, they welcomed him into the very chamber that he lit an insurrection against. They welcomed him there. Are these, uh, these types of Republicans, are these types of politicians uh, going to last? Are they going to uh, make things work out in the long run? Three cards. One, two, three. 
Let's see. Well, the Empress card. Um, again, this is telling me that, um, no, you know what? This is the Empress card. So this is compassion and emotion. And this is who's really ruling the roost behind the scenes. The challenge of that is judgment. Judgment is coming to those uh, folks that we're talking about. And uh, the fool is that they are a fool, but there's a new journey coming up uh, for that Republican Party to uh, uh, pay attention to. Two more cards is uh, the Knight of Cups. I love it when cards repeat because it tells me the cards know how I'm going to read it. And so they agree to repeat that card. And this tells me there's a fight for that value, or for that emotion. And the High Priestess. So the High Priestess gives us, and it's beautiful to get the High Priestess along here with Judgment and uh, the Empress card right here. Uh, because she gives us the she gives the reader me the uh, authority to interpret um, uh, her um, showing up in this reading as I would, and I think it all has to do with goodness and hope. And then the final card is this five of cups. All of this won't come without some loss, some sorrow, some emotional feelings. But there's always something left to pick up and go on with. So that's uh, where that stands. Um, I just wonder if um, if we narrow it down, let's go right down to this debate that had to go back to Donald Trump, didn't it? This debate that Trump's going to have. Is he going to uh, win in this debate? Just three cards. Okay. One, two, and three. Is he going to win in this debate? Okay, well, they're certainly trying. The Eight of Pentacles is practicing a craft, but look, they're embattled. It's a big fight, and uh, holding on to their values is what's going to be their challenge. Queen of Cups again showing up. Loads of emotion, strength here. And the uh, uh, privileged family. So he's practicing his craft. It's a battle. It's an uphill battle. Um, the challenge is holding on to his value. The Queen of Cups shows up with some compassion and strength, and then the um, uh, wealthy family. Uh, all of this pentacles is what uh, ends up in the end. It looks like he he. I don't know that he wins the debate, but he wins the uh, admiration of the Republican Party for whatever the hell he's going to do. Very sad. Listen, that's the end of my video today. It had to be short because I had to squeeze this in with more work that's going on here at the house. So uh, we'll hopefully get something a little more meaningful and longer next time. And thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. Okay, so this is the newest deck I've got. This is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbio on um, the um, the classic uh, Rider Waite Tarot, but uh, apparently this person Wise has had their input into it. And uh, the, what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like what I think of when I open these containers is if I got this as a gift, what would I think about it? And I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box, I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're going to see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, I'll go over, but I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And, you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks it's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific uh, synopsis of uh, how uh, this uh, uh, Rider Waite uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about Arthur Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith, who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic theory and history of all of that. Um, it, is, it gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about, about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the cards. So I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth shattering. It's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now, the cards themselves, they got a cool back. They're kind of shiny. And um, 
you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close-up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems and so in that they're close up, but they're still vibrant with color. And I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in a typical tarot drawing. And that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, then there's a third uh, benefit, is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle. or, or And then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. And I just like them a lot. So this will be my newest deck.